With us right now, and I'm really excited about this, an Oscar winner, Patrick Osborne. He won in, um, when was it, 2012 for Feast? Two years ago. Two years ago. Patrick, welcome. It's great to have you. Thank you. Great to be here, guys. So an Oscar-winning director. You've done shorts before, animation before. What made you decide to do VR this time? Well, I had uh, I'd worked on both Paper Man and Feast at Disney, and um, you know, during the tour with Feast at a, at a film festival in, in Annecy, France, uh, I met Jan Pinkova and Karen Dufalo, who are the creative directors of ATAP, which is a division uh-huh. of Google. And um, Jan Pinkova was actually a Pixar director. He did the Jerry's Game short, the short with the, the man playing chess back from uh, the 90s. And... Um, they just asked if I would be interested in, in playing around in, in 360 video with Spotlight Stories and and VR was kind of just on the horizon there, so it was probably going to be involved in VR as well. You remember Spotlight Stories, right? Oh, yeah. I think I got it with the Moto X was the first one yeah. I saw. And I was blown away. I thought, this is so cool, and I was wondering how creators would take to it. So, Patrick, how do creators take to it? <laughs> is it hard to work with? Is it fun? Do you like it? Uh, it's a challenge to to give up the idea of the frame being in your control as a director, and you know, with the with the audience being able to move the the phone around and kind of reframe the shot, you have to find other ways to get your fill of composition and um, and make sure that the the audience is actually seeing what you're you're wanting them to see, and it requires you to, to treat stories in a different way. And uh, you know, the, the the story for Pearl actually came out of the challenge itself, where I thought I wanted to do cuts. If I was going to do a VR film, I wanted to use editing somehow. But if you keep cutting and putting the audience in a new location, they're going to lose where they are. But if you set them in an environment that's consistent, like a car, you can get away ah. with moving the environment oh. and, and, and still being able to orient the audience and not make them kind of have to look around at each cut. So you, that, so was, that was, was a good compromise. You did create a frame. It's just a it broader did, yeah. frame than, than traditionally you'd get. That is fascinating. It's, a, it's like a stage. And then and then you also have compositional frames within the car. You have the windows, which you can make beautiful compositions within, uh, which, which gets a little bit of my kind of uh, control freak nature out of the way and satisfied. How do you, what tool do you use to make these? Did you make it 2D first and then make it 3D or...? Uh, the storyboarding process is is really hard because there aren't really tools for drawing <laughs> yeah. on a mm-hmm. sphere around you. I mean, tilt brush and and quill and some of these VR tools are starting to be that. But uh, you know, Photoshop, I would just draw a really wide storyboard. Uh, so it really ended up being a lot of Maya, you know, kind of the yeah. typical 3D animation tools that I'm used to using, um, but done in a very simple way. So we could put them on the phone. That's a, a, you're seeing it right there, kind of the simple version yeah. of it. And um, that's that's just a way to be able to get uh, some kind of idea of what the film is going to be like. The the hard thing about this type of storytelling is that you really don't see the finished product until it's done. There's no way to really see it all together at one time uh, because the optimization is the final step, which allows it to play at full speed with the cuts actually working. So we had to work on very small chunks of it get them, those to work and hope that when we watch the whole thing, it was going to work out. Uh, you saw a clip there of recording audio. You can't just do the visuals 360. The audio has to be 360, too. Yeah, I think it's... Um, they use, uh, Apollo Music in San Francisco used this uh, tetrahedral microphone, I think they called it, which records the sphere of sound around a point. That's and um, every... we you the, uh, the hardware of the phone isn't fast enough yet to actually calculate sound bounce, how it bounces mm. off of glass and cloth. So we had to make sure that we were recording the song with the actor sitting in the right place and the windows up or down wow. or the, the car the car in a situation that matched the environment. Otherwise, you know, you get a little bit of that. Uh, I, I think the it's almost an uncanny valley effect where the audio and the visuals don't match right. and you start to kind of feel dizzy and disoriented. We didn't want any of that. So um, that mic was required for that. And it, it really is a cool effect to sit in there and just like, even if you close your eyes and tilt your head and you just hear how the sound moves around the car, it, it's 100% accurate and it's really gorgeous. Now for Academy voters, what do you do? You send them a daydream? How do you, how do you get them <laughs> yeah. to see this? 
We actually, I went into the VR headset and I recorded a camera. So it was basically me watching the VR experience and recording video like as if through a phone. That's what we're seeing and right I, now, in effect, right? Yeah, and we yeah. output, yes, it's like it's that. And we output that, uh, those images, about 30 minutes of video to to an editor, to this guy, Stephen Riley, we went over to Passion Pictures in London. And I sat with Stephen and we edited 30, 30 minutes of footage down to the, uh, the six minute theatrical film. So what you see in the theater is like a 4K render from a cell phone um, uh -huh. that is actually kind of edited into regular uh, DCP theater format. Wow. wow. Were there any, I mean, this is all a lot of work. Were there, what were the advantages? Were there any advantages <laughs> as a storyteller? I mean, I would love to be able to animate the whole world and then go shoot it after the fact in all animation. It's generally not a, an efficient way to work. You kind of want to not do what you're not seeing, you know, off screen. Um, but I loved it. Like, as a, as a director, it kind of spoils you to be able to sort of animate the world and then find your shots later. Um, but sadly, that takes a long time. So the, the tricky thing about this is that you really, the tools for reviewing and creating in VR are evolving and they're finally getting to a spot where you know they're they're comfortable or starting to be comfortable but at this point we're we were making this on screens for a 3d space and that's a little bit of a detachment that's difficult i have to say though uh a, a kudos to you because there is a storyline there is an arc mm -hmm. in this and there's a great ending and you even though you as the viewer are getting to choose the angle and look around you get it and it happens and you experience it. So it does really work. It does. Hopefully, I think it's like, uh, I think you treat VR like theater where you spotlight what you want people to see and you, you add cues, sound and light and actual spotlights sometimes saying, look this direction. And you also kind of know which way they're gonna look, uh, which way they're gonna be sitting. But um, you also have to make sure all the choices you make just support the story, that the color and the music also help you get there and that way the story washes over someone and even if they don't see everything they still get it on a macro level well it also it works better as a short because i i i'm i was tempted to re-watch once you go through yeah. you go, oh then you think oh let's do that again mm -hmm. let's watch it and this time so you're sitting shotgun you're for the whole movie you're in the passenger front passenger seat of this that's pretty your, much yeah that's pretty much your point of view Interesting. Um, yeah, and it depends on the, the Vive version. I guess not. We actually had yeah. to move some characters out of the way uh, oh. for the spot for the um, for the the 360 video version. You're kind of in between the two seats. Yeah, yeah. You're in the console um, there. Yeah. But we discovered in the actual high end headset, it felt weird to be sitting on someone's lap. Right. So um, right. we did move some we did move some characters around for the Vive version to make it work. It's cool that you know because it's done in real time, you can do that. You know, nothing's permanent about the render. So um, you know, moving characters around isn't too big of a deal. How big is the final f file that you're going to? Uh, that's about. From. I think the the game, the quote unquote game, is about 300 megs. Uh, the the uh, the engine that Spotlight Stories runs on is under a megabyte because wow. it actually runs in the YouTube app on an Android phone. If you oh. open an Android YouTube app, you're running a game engine, and it's not even telling you. Wow, uh, it's, I had no it's a idea. pretty cool little thing. So, yeah, I so have... you'll see it. It'll, it actually has parallax and stuff. If you open it on YouTube, you can actually see. Um, you know, it's not a video. It's not 360 video. It's interactive. And it also waits for you. If you're not looking in the right area at the right time, it'll give you a few minutes oh, to kind of that's get yourself together, especially at the beginning. So it's between six and seven and a half minutes, depending on how you watch it. My, oh, That's really interesting. The length changes to make yeah. sure that you get the the key experiences that you need to Interesting. I see. I see yeah, that little rendering happening as you're moving the it's phone. Hard. Yeah. It's definitely hard to do um, with music, but in the spots in between the verses, we're allowed we can stretch. Ah, a little. of course. Mm. Yeah, because you've got the some music of the track. some of the other spotlight stories do a lot more stretching. Um, the one the one in there, rain or shine, has like a hundred different ways you could watch it. Right. Um, right. Mine's more linear than that. I just I I'm so glad to hear that. And by the way, there's a new one, The Simpsons has a Planet of the Couches just came out. I'm so glad to see that Spotlight <laughs> is alive, that these stories are alive, because I kind of lost track after my Moto X, I moved on, and I didn't realize there are still people making these stories. In fact, now, yeah. you're nominated for an Oscar, which is pretty darn awesome. I'm gonna be rooting for it's you. It's cool. I'm gonna, are you well, going? You. Are yeah, you going? Are you going? 
Of red course, color. yeah, red yeah. Tuxedo and all that. <laughs> it's all dry cleaned and ready. <laughs> oh, yay. What will you be wearing on the red carpet, have you said? Uh, who? Well, my <laughs> Armani, but my oh, wife. Uh, that's nice. My wife is going to be. She she's she's has about. We're, we're having a kid in about two months, so oh, she's wow. going to be hopefully the, the most pregnant person on the red carpet. That we're, is we're so thinking. awesome. Um, and she's so excited awesome. about finding that dress. <laughs> I I do you think you'll do this again, or was this just a fun one off? Yeah. Uh, I you know it's a great group up there. Uh, the cool thing about Spotlight Stories is there's there's a few artists, but you really bring your team. I hired people oh, I was nice. fans of on Twitter and on Instagram, and it's really neat to kind of, you know, assemble that team that way. And you, we entirely, uh, like I live in LA and Google's in, uh, in in Mountain View, so we a lot of our work was actually done over Skype and Hangouts, and uh, and and you can really make a film that way now, which is kind of cool. People all over the world contributed to this. And it's not as expensive either. You don't have to fly everybody out to right. a certain point to do right. everything, and that's right. great. No, you don't, yeah. It's cool. So, how many people ended up working on this? Yeah. It's a, it's a five, it's, as you said, six to eight minutes short. How many people ended up working on it? Yeah, you, the first two months is uh, like a like a trial and error period where you get the story working and do a test or two. And that part, I just had uh, like one uh, production designer and a few artists, like two or three. And then once we got the go ahead to make the whole thing, it's uh, I think we had twelve animators. Wow. And uh, six or seven painters, uh, artists uh, in the kind of 2D painting design world. And, um, and then they have about, I'd say we had five or six lighting experts and then um, about 10 software developers that end up touching it. So Holy probably about cow. 45, 50 people. For uh, a six all. to seven minute <laughs> That's story. Yeah. That's amazing. Most of, most of them being on for about six months or so. so yeah. And you know, for Google to be making these art projects, which really to them are. I agree. Yeah. It's, it's completely. It's experiments. They're compl It's yeah. amazing that they're willing there's to no fund revenue in it art, for art. art like this. Yeah. There's not. There's yeah. not. So that's it's really cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was. It's so nice to meet you. Yeah. And uh, by the way, I loved it. I mean, I really loved it. It's a great story. You should all watch it. You feel good at the end of it. Patrick Osborne is the director of a the first VR short nominated for an Oscar. It's called Pearl, and there are kind of lots of ways to watch it. You could search for it on YouTube. If you have a phone, iPhone or Android, mm -hmm. you download the Google If you Spotify. have a phone. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much almost everybody can watch this on their phone, any smartphone. Yeah. Uh, Google Spotlight Stories. It's free, and there are lots of other stories on there. And it's cool because you, you don't have to have Daydream or Cardboard um, you can just move around the phone and, mm -hmm. and look around. I really love that part of Spotlight Stories. In fact, that was my first experience of this long before mm -hmm. the the cardboard swiveling in a chair. Yeah, just going like <laughs> yes. This and I and I remember we were sitting in the old studio and I was trying to figure out how can I shoot this because I'm moving the phone all over the place. There was no way to show it. I just had to tell people to download it. Uh, it's also available on your HTC Vive if you want to get. Is that is that a, a much higher quality experience? As you said, you can't sit in people's laps. I think so. I think that's like, you know, that's almost like experiencing a memory and then oh, the, wow. the phone version is sort of watched. It's like as if you were it's a little detached watching mm. it from your phone. Yeah, it's a little different. Uh, but it's a lot easier to move your head than it is to move your right. arms. So. I'm going right. to try it on the Vive yeah. then when I get home. Today. Yeah. That sounds really cool. Hey, thank you. So cool. nice to meet you, Patrick. Good luck at the Oscars. Break a leg. Thanks, Leo. I, you know, I've, I've been a fan of the show for a long time, so it's, it's an honor to be on it. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, my, my I'll be, just think of me. I'll be watching you and rooting <laughs> for you. When they say your name, I'll say, yeah! <laughs> Thank uh, you, all right, Patrick. Man. All right, take one. care. Bye-bye. <laughs> That's so cool. That is neat. I really, and I, and I, you know, I really didn't, I thought, oh, this is cool, but nobody's going to do many stories because it's got to be tons of work. So I'm really glad to see more and more people That's, doing I mean, this. they put that much work into Pixar six shorts. Months, six months, yeah, you're right. And I imagine with all of the, this incubating, all this cross, you yeah. know, and Google pays for it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that could neat. be our future. We're just sitting in movie theaters with cardboard on our I faces. I see us. I don't know why, but I see us in floaty Maybe. chairs with big Slurpees and visors on. Just I like believe this. that was also a Pixar movie. Oh, thank you. Yes. Right. Yeah, maybe. Yes. Mm -hmm.